Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and we're playing as the Principality of Kemerovo. If you'd like to read about them, please go right ahead. And here's the next paragraph. And we are going to be a very interesting nation to play as in Russia under Warwick II. Balance court politics among your nobles and your successors. Onwards, we shall. Let's begin with the focus, shall we? Reign of the Bad King, Nikolai Krylov also known now as Rurik II, has so far proved to be an exceptionally eccentric ruler. His rule thus far has demonstrated his continuous ability to contradict himself on several subjects, and few believe that this ability will end anytime soon. The Mad King has also decided upon strengthening the military in order to strike out against their neighbors, which he sees as rebellious subjects. There is clearly plenty the king has to do before he can embark on the warpath. The king's children are both attempting to persuade his highness to follow their visions for how to prepare the kingdom for the future wars. Judgments will have to be made on whether to follow the populist policies of Prince Yuri or the brutal pragmatism of Princess Lydia. Rurik will need to determine the direction of the economy, the army, and the society he wishes to establish. Once these challenges have been overcome, we can set out on the warpath. Oh boy. And I'll let you know we are using uh, let's see, a state chancellor tool mod. Obviously a TNO mod. As well as player that peace conferences, which obviously does nothing, nothing for us really, but three mods nonetheless. And we have the National Spirits, Legacy of the Siberian Plan. Oh goodness, yes. Esoteric Kingdom, very nice. The Two Wolves, oh yes, his children, very good. And the King's Unions, nice. As well as the Kutznek Basin. And obviously we don't have a very large territory yet, but we will eventually, but the People's Prince. Prince Yuri roamed through the bustling town center full of people going about their lives, buying from the markets, enjoying a day at the park, and gossiping to one another. Yuri enjoyed coming here and being around all the people who were just going about their daily lives and enjoying what they can. It was something calming, somewhat calming, and a good break from the throne room and his cynical sister. There was still something off-putting, however. Wherever Yuri went, there was a sense of fear, fear of bandits, fear of raids, invasions from other warlords, and the fear that their family wouldn't have enough to eat that night. It was there in almost everywhere Yuri went. The people couldn't live like this, Yuri thought. All the dread and despair deep inside everyone, it was unbearable. Every time he went to visit the town, he felt like something had to be done. Anything to improve people's lives, at least somewhat. What he was thinking, if he was a prince, if someone could do something to help the people, it was him. Sure, his father did seem to care a lot for his kingdom, but what from Yuri saw, it wasn't enough. More had to be done if Kemerovo were to be the grand kingdom that cared for his people, the people deserve better. And next we should do the king's industry. Creates Oh, factory industrial capacity by 2.5%. The king's army. Uh, what do we have here? Army professionalism would be really nice. Increased worker discontent. Combat schooling. Wartime industry. Decreased consumer goods factories by, by 7... Oh my goodness. Lines of infantry versus columns of tanks. Oh, interesting. Support the unions. Increase the influence of Prince Yuri. Oh boy. Change in course. Increase influence of Princess Lydia. The will of the people. Academic base. Lean right... Industrial expertise. Increased worker discount. Free trade. More construction speed. I like that. Ooh. Ooh. I don't know which ones. Prince Yuri's ideals. Authoritarian democracy. More defense. Kingdom of equals. Oh, boy. Authoritarian democracy versus Princess Lydia. Um, the king's military heritage. More attack. I like the attack. Entrenchment. Speed. Stability, which is okay. Uh, maybe we'll go with the king's army next. Uh, maybe we'll go Icy Capacity. Let's do that one first. Uh, but then we, I want to get standing army as fast as possible. Let's do the King's Army. The Royal Armed Forces are pitifully small and armed with only the most basic of weapons. Their commander tactics are ancient and dating back to the German invasion. The military needs to be changed if we want to have any hope of defending ourselves and defeating the rebellious subjects outside our borders. To make an army our king would be proud of, our small forces must be increased to a full standing army to defend the nation. That means even more men will need to join our forces if we want to have our chance of victory. We must also increase our military production to arm the new recruits. Lastly, our tactics must be retouched to fight a modern war in the Siberian Wasteland. The Royal Army must never lose. Let's go and scavenge for loot too. And what do we have here? Scavenge for loot. Legacy of the Siberian Plan. Oh yes. Royal Development. Not bad. Uh, this is not too bad either. And who's around us that we can maybe raid? I think. Sorry, my cat was uh, complaining in the, all, the hallway a little bit, but that's all right. Let's see. Orosia. I would love to beat these people up. Orosia. Uh, no manpower, which is good. Two to four divisions. We have three. Uh, who is this? Barnal, Novus Obiersk? Oh god, no. Uh, uh, if you'd like to read about the modern Bogatir, please go right ahead. So, an interesting story, if nothing else. The Wolf Princess, though. The pr Wolf Princess prowled through the halls of King Rurik's court. Prince Lydia enjoyed watching her father make decisions. A ruler had to be decisive. A wrong decision could turn entire empires upside down. Monarchs were the best for laying down the law of the land, and they know how to use their authority. 
Ever since the end of the wars in Russian Siberia, the Krylov family had changed. With the father carving out a fiefdom in central Siberia, the entire family now had their own ideas on how to fix Russia. The princess felt the best way to lead the kingdom was with their strong autocrat. Prince Yuri, on the other hand, thought the best way was to follow the opinions of the people. Where he was idealistic, she was pragmatic. Where her brother was pacifistic, she was militaristic. Ironic considering her past as a nurse, but necessary in the new order of things. Her brother just didn't understand the role they lived in now. Did he really think all the enemies that surrounded them would just hand over the control to their father? No, that's where Yuri would fall. And fail. Her goal wasn't to sit in Kemerovo and try to grow more food for the people while bandits continued to raid farms and murder their owners. Her goal, their family's goal, was to reunite Russia. Only then could the people be fed and their lives be improved. Russia could not, make, be, could not be made whole if they could not make some small sacrifices. Lydia had to just make sure her father made the right decisions. After all, the ends justify the means. And we're going to need a strong army. If Mr. Dude strikes at Mr. Hitlerino. Oh boy. Alright, so we got enough to do something down here. Oh boy. I want to just maximize this as much as possible. Consumer goods, as far as I understand. Um, hmm. Consumer goods, industrial capacity, that's fine. Oh, what else do we have down here? Resource extraction, consumer goods. So, we'll probably go with this one. Nice. Factory apple goes down a little bit, but that's okay. As long as we can build, 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 build. His Majesty's eccentricities. To call General Nik Nikolai Krav or Rurik II eccentric was perhaps the largest understatement in all of Russia. He woke in the early morning hours before anyone else in his household, was constantly drunk, and shied away from loud noises. He spoke softly yet firmly, and seemed exactly of sound mind even when addressing himself at Tsar or firmly insisting that he be called Rurik II to everyone who called General Krylov by his old name. What of it then? Uh, oh no, occasionally, the servants amused among themselves at the, about the king whilst he roamed the palace or resided on his throne. Was he truly mad? Was this what the horrors of war brought? No, others argued. A general was merely putting on an act to confuse and bewilder others, yet all of them knew the others had no concrete answer. The Tsar certainly gave none. Then what of it then? If they were following a lunatic, he was a benevolent one who treated them well. If they're following a man talented enough to put on such an act, then clearly they were working for one of the greatest minds in Siberia. These thoughts at least put them at ease when the breaks ended or the Tsar called for them, yet... Still yet, the question lingered. A strange man in an even stranger world. So, it seems like... We can close this one out. Uh, let's see. Prince Yuri is a friend of labor and reformist intelligentsia. Uh, but Princess Lydia holds strength as a strength as a highest national ideal and to pursue a harsh militaristic path of fiercely. Um, with that in mind, I think... how I, I hate making these strong, strong decisions uh, right now in the first episode. But I think if I play Rook twice eventually... I think we'll go down the other route. So I think I want to try. I want to be as strong as possible. So let's go with Lydia, maybe. Maybe Lydia. More factory output. Better division and recovery rates. All right, maybe we'll try that one. Maybe. We'll see. Hopefully we can do well, though. So we're going to go a standing army. To defeat our enemies, we cannot have an untrained rebel. The core of our military must be made up of professional soldiers who are willing to fight for our king and his ideals. With a well-trained professional army, even with the, even the largest of enemies can be bested. We shall stand above the other traitorous warlords who wish to conquer and destroy our kingdom. While it may take some time to fully professionalize our military, it will be worth it in the end. Better training and better officers will whip the troops into shape. Our army will be the most distinguished and magnificent in Siberia. Oh, you bet it will be. Alright, so we're looking to go okay here. Um, Orochia, no Siberia's going to tie. People's Revolutionary Council. Probably not five to seven. We literally only have three. So, yeah. Work your concessions. No, we're good. Low is 16. That's fine for now. Mm, decrease resource extraction. Factory icy. Gain goes down. Um, mm, oh, look at that. Oh, we're going to go with equipment immediately. Right? That's probably good to do. Equipment? Yeah, let's go equipment. Nova Sabiris. I really want these guys to beat them up. So they don't have any money yet, but that's okay. Harsh quotas. And it's just a capacity. Construction speed would not be bad. Consumer goods... There you go. More consumer goods. The King's Army, my friends, and we're already down to minus 15% consumer goods. Aw, oh, yeah. Standing Army, here we go. The Royal Army. Move, you godforsaken fools and dogs. Ivan Yarkov barked at the cadets as they ran through the obstacle course. Is this the best you can muster to defend your motherland? I've seen babushkas hold a rifle better than that. He blew a whistle and the exercise came to a halt. Fall in! The cadets stopped what they were doing and scrambled to fall in line, wiping mud off their uniforms and trying to keep their rifles clean. Ivan looked at the man inside. They were miserable, no doubt. Most of them were probably farmers' sons, used to hard labor, but not this much exertion for so long. He could see the resentment in their eyes, which he figured was a start. He'd rather have trained men who hated him than green men who adored him. 
Men, Ivan began, you may be wondering why I have you out here since dawn with no food and me breathing down your necks at the slightest mistake. I know you are suffering, in fact. I want you to be suffering. Because the more you suffer here, the less you will suffer out there. I'd rather your legs give out on the obstacle course than on the march. I'd rather your first day without food be in the camp than in a foxhole. And I'd ra would certainly rather you find out your limits training in that than in battle against the Tsar's foes. I do not expect your love. I do not expect your thanks. I do not expect even the slightest hint of warmth from any of you. But what I do expect is that you will call or you will fight when ordered and keep fighting until your body can fight no more. Am I clear? Ivan received a chorus of yes, sirs in response. Good. Now for the course again. He blew the whistle and his men scrambled to the start of the course. Faster, you whore sons. Faster, your fathers would weep and shame at the sight. Hard times create strong men. And I always forget to do this. Uh, that's not bad. I guess we'll go with these guys. We're going to need a big old army here, so... And the wolves in the throne room. The throne room. Set empty as the two wolves circled each other, burying their teeth with eyes pointing, pointing daggers at each other. The king Rohit had decided to take a short break, leaving the prince and the princess without their king. What what once was a peaceful throne room had been transformed into a battleground just as Rook walked out the door. You have no care for the people, Yuri cried, angered how Lydia would just ignore the people's plight. All you want is for the powerful to gain more power and crush our own subjects. Do you have no empathy at all? How do you think a kingdom is supposed to be run, brother? Lydia replied cynically. It's not like we can magically rain down wealth and equality upon every subject. This isn't your dream world, Yuri. Get over it. Of course it's not, Yuri said, starting to get angrier. He knew Lydia liked it when he got angry, but he didn't care. However, we cannot ignore what our subjects are going through every day. The poor are starving in this bandit-ridden wasteland, and you don't care. Oh, no. Yuri's poor little friends out inside in the plaza are hungry. Whatever will we do, Lydia replied with a sarcastic tone. Yuri stared down at the floor, glum. We really are polar opposites, aren't we? Lydia laughed. You finally got something white, white, right for once. The wolves continue to circle. Oh, it's a pretty wolf. Look at that. Nice. Defensive doctrine. Um, your life for the king. We get more attack and defense and more monthly army professionalism change. I like that a lot. I really like that a lot. As much as I love this stuff, oh, civilian factories are really nice, though, to build stuff, but uh, I'm going to go with the conscripted force. A larger army is required to defend our realm, and the only possible way to increase our military size is conscription. Our army will be backed up by conscripts, which, sh which should give us a lot more infantry to be able to train. This gives us a chance to mobilize light infantry, which would be able to knock back or back up our more heavier and armed regular infantry in wartime. In wartime, my, my apologies. Still, this will not be popular with the people. We will need conscripted laborers and farmers, and they won't be happy with leaving their homes and workplaces. Unfortunately, this is a sacrifice that all we'll need to make to defend our king and our land. What can we do down here? Um, anything yet? No, down here. Uh, discontent is not that big, so. Uh, warrior development. Honestly, this stuff is okay. Yeah, we could get some more factories and stuff, but eh, we might go for the extra manpower if we really do need it later on, but we'll see what happens. Increases discon work is discontent by a little bit. Old soldiers. Tapping his finger impatiently on the table he sat at, Rook impatiently waited the point of time. He was about to get up and leave when he heard the sound of approaching boots and looked over in the direction to see his old friend Alexander Shevstov. Ah, finally there you are. My sincerest apologies, Rurik. Shev uh, Shevtsov spoke softly and calmly as though without worry and took a seat at the other end of the table. Drilling the men took longer than I thought it would. Yes, well, you have always been very dutiful, haven't you? Even back in those simpler times in the Red Army. Flashing an amused smile, Chef Stav nodded. Yes, I suppose I have been, haven't I? And now that I serve you, it is my pride to work even harder. Though he made an attempt to hide it, it was clear to Chef Stav that Rurik wasn't really listening. Is something wrong, Rurik? No, 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 nothing. I assure you, Rurik said hurriedly. It's just that, do you ever miss being in the Red Army, Alexander Griv... Grigorovich, despite his best efforts, Shevtsov couldn't discern what Rurik was feeling. Honestly, honesty would be the best policy then, he said it. Oh, on the occasion, he admitted. I can't say I feel anything either way for the ideology, but they weren't all wrong either. And they were happier days for almost everyone. I would think it's perfectly normal to miss them. I see, Rurik said, letting out alongside that. I need to hear that from somebody else. Thank you. And any time, my dear friend. Let us remain friends, Alexander Grigorovich, to the end of our days. Meet with industrialists? Uh, sure, why not? We can use more output. With this, I'm not sure how much this will help us out. Uh, do we have, like, a national spear for this? Rurik Basin, which is actually really nice. Two wolves, less stability, but that's okay. What do we have over here? So we have academic base, research facilities, agriculture. Poverty is getting better. I like that a lot. Uh, industrial expertise is slightly going up, as well as army professionalism. Sign us up, my friends. Now, we can keep doing this, and I kind of want to, but I kind of want to do these guys, too. Decrease the influence of Prince... Yuri, uh, for four, five, six. Is it really worth it right now? I don't see a modifier here talking about this, so maybe not. 
Your life for the king, how about that? All men who serve in the king's army must have complete and undeniable loyalty. Each individual soldier needs to be completely devoted to the king and his commands. Every, even everyone, from the scout to the officer, must be willing to give his life for the service to the king. Better training in combat will make each soldier an elite and mighty force to be reckoned with. Each man in the king's army will fight like five in our enemies. Troops must also be dutifully educated to serve the king in the realm. There's no room for insolence or treachery in the royal military. Very, very good. Still nothing else here, which is kind of sucky. Not gonna lie, that's a little sucky. Um, I mean, I don't mind... Ooh, more construction people would be really nice. Lowering discontent, maybe just a little bit? I mean, it's, it's low. I mean, it's not that bad at all. It's not like we're going to get anything more here, and we got that done. Good. I would like some more artillery, but we're going to keep focusing on... Ooh, look at that. Plus 10% more soft stack. Nice. Alright, what's next? God, I wish we could prepare a raid against someone else but instead of these guys, but whatever. Oh, wartime industry can decrease consumer goods. I'd like that. <sighs> Columns and tanks would be nice. Lines of infantry. Let's get another civilian factory, shall we? After the past deterioration of our standing in the region, it was assumed that we were doomed to obscurity due to our complete lack of fortune. Or so it seemed after all we could still control the industrial city of Kemerovo. If we were to utilize and advance the output of the city, producing new guns and equipment, equipping freshly trained soldiers and extending these plans to enhance our infrastructure, improving the mobility of our army and workers, maybe we could once again take a rightful place as a relevant contender in the region under the ambitious King Work of the Second. Absolutely. 15, not bad. Oh, scavenge for more loot. And which people might want to come touch our booties, and that would not be very good. Oh, the Central Siberian Republic. Um, Krasnoyarsk? I mean, they seem like more like us, but do your part. Ever since King Rook had proclaimed himself as such, Kermovo had been different. The medieval revivalism that had followed the establishment of his dynasty had resulted in some strange occurrences, such as one that now drew a crowd of curious and confused onlookers. A group of workmen, accompanied by several policemen and soldiers, had arrived and were pro approximately halfway through the painting of an enormous mural on the side of a building overlooking a public square. The content of the mural was cleared during the military, but the artwork was not. For many in attendance, it reminded them... <clears throat> oh, my apologies. It reminded them of the standard practices of the old Soviet artwork, with clear elements of socialist realism and reflected in the depictions of the smiling and proud soldiers intended to be on display. For others, or perhaps for those younger and with fewer and less educated or well less established memories of the old Union, it was very different. The heavy lines and dark shadows all oriented towards emphasizing a central figure in an almost religious light, all evoked memories of the medieval styles of the old Rurik principalities that have been seen in museums, history books, and other such sources. The fusion was, all agreed, at least interesting, if not particularly attractive. Of course, none would dare such voice uh, perspective. Now the police closely watching, but the thought remained to varying degrees each inside of those watching. A fusion of both old and much older. Oh, look at this. Such a superior. Krasnoyarsk. We... Oh. Where would we do it against Krasnoyarsk? I'm not really sure. So hopefully it'd just be like right here. 3v4, uh, that's not really good. Do we have any benefit for our young prince, Yuri Krylov? Not much, but we're going to go and grab equipment capture ratio stuff, so. We could try it. We can try it. Oh, okay, no civil rights today. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, I like this one. And we're currently at minus 17%, not bad. I'll probably do changing course, increase the workers' discontent a little bit. Even though, this actually hurts your consumer goods factors, huh? I like the academic base, but it's not extremely important. I like the more political power, too. Increase the dis workers' discontent even more? That's not good. But I want to get that extra military factory first. Defensive doctrine. With the current state of Russia, invasion could come at any time, anywhere. Fortifications, watchtowers, and radar stations must be constructed in easily defendable positions so that we know when and where an invasion is coming. With their enemies most likely outnumbering us, the army must be trained to defend and ambush. The kingdom must always stay on guard, and the forts, bunkers, and trenches. Our enemies on all sides cannot be given any advantage. A severely undefended Kemerovo will be turned into a fortress. The royal economy. Lev uh, Voznesensky, the first royal minister of finance, poured himself a glass of water from the pitcher on the table, downing it in one gulp like a, it was a shot of vodka. He had definitely wish it was, however. Today, he had to deal with the royal family. Prince Yuri and Princess Lydia were all, by all accounts, upsetting people of their own, but when put in the same room, they were as dangerous a combination as nitric acid and glyc glycerin. Glycerin, yeah. How dare you insult the royal unions like that? If you weren't my sister, I'd have you thrown in prison for that. Oh, please, 
economic poison. You only stand by these idiots because their support is easy to buy. If you ever want any hope of improving our economy, we need. What we need is someone who has actually studied finance and didn't spend all day learning how to stitch wounds. Why you? Ahem, Vaznesnesinski loudly cleared his throat. Let me try and understand this. Prince Yuri, you suggest that His Majesty can concentrate on the workers' rights reforms in order to improve quality of life. And Prince Lydia, you support lowering subsidies and rolling back regulation to free up more funding for your hospital expansion program? Am I correct in these assumptions? Both nobles silently nodded. Very well. While both are sound ideas, I shall tentatively, might I add, look into the feasibility of implementing His Highness proposals. Her Highness's proposals. So it looks like they're finding someone already. So let's see if we can do this. They refuse tribute. Oh boy. Please don't lose. For the love of God, please do not lose. It looks like we're doing okay though for now. Please do not throw any more soldiers in there. Come on, come on. Oh, they threw another soldier in there. Come on. And we got him. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely delicious agriculture methods. Here we go. Oh, what happened to the prince? Ah, Rook is here, so that's good. Come, Rovo, are you the one we want to beat up all the time now? It might be. Oh, Rook. Oh, aggressive assaulter, yes. I love breakthrough and offensive doctrine. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, vacuum tube competing, food for the hungry. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. This happens every single campaign when we play as a Russian warlord. More stability, physical power, and more support. Sign us up. Awesome. I don't mind decreasing workers' discontent sometimes. Factory output. Uh, that goes up by five, though. That's not really worth it. Construction speed. I don't mind doing that maybe once. Just because we're pretty good on consumer goods. I want to maximize that out, but I would like more construction speed so we can build things a little bit faster. Defensive doctrine and wartime industry. Well, their men may be well trained. There's nothing. They are nothing without weapons. To keep up with the expanding army, we must continue to grow our military industry. We will be no match in the oncoming conflicts if we do not have enough guns or supplies for our troops. We'll focus on arms production, mass-producing weapons and ammo for the troops on the front lines. What industry we have must also be prepared for war. If more weapons are produced than consumer goods, then so be it. A man without a gun is nothing. Nothing at all. So we're currently at minus 15%. Not bad. Through the fog, though. In the distant realm of Kamarovo, wherein resides the Tsar of all the Russias, there is a great concrete bunker monolith not far from the capital itself. In that great concrete monolith, guarded by grim-faced veterans with rifles in a vast spread iron dish atop, is a crew that sees farther than the human eyes find possible. Theirs is the domain of the radar, and they are led by Pavel Zelensky of the Royal Army. Pavel glares at one of the subordinates, as they poke and prod at the dials and readouts. So what then? So what news then? What now, Ilda, Ilya? What, did you see something flying in the air to call me in and alert everyone in the room? Ilya stiffens to attention. Sir, something's on the dial. There's a dot. Let me see, Pavel. Shoulders past another curious conscript. Looks at the readout and pulls, pulls a manual out of his pocket. The room clears and hears more curses and more languages than most Americans can dream of, and Pavel nods decisively as he finds what he's searching for in all the manuals. See? A meaty finger stabs at the page as Ilya cr crowds in close to look. You saw a bird, you idiot. A bird, not a bomber. At that point, Volodya, the longest of the conscripts, assigned to the air defense station, Kamarovo chimes in. So this means that Ilya can find his dinner, right? He winks at the other crewmen. I mean, not as if someone's going to ask if we bag a bird or two from the roof. Pavel, to his credit, as an NCO, just sighs. Sometimes it's just a bird. And sometimes it's not. Yeah, that stuff is nice and all, but with the Siberian plan, like, I've, I've tried to fight Rook before, and I've won against him, but he's very difficult to beat sometimes. Quite difficult, so. So it looks like despotism, Nikita, Alexander Brusilov. All right, well, whatever. Lines of infantry. I'm not sure which one we want to do. I don't really care which one we do too much for this stuff. So maybe we let's see. Pragmatism. We get some more max planning attack. I like the attack. Entrenchment speed. I like that. I like this stuff, but uh, as I've slightly already kind of said, I think we're just going to go with the woman here, Princess Lydia. So, changing course. Uh, yeah, let's get some more industrial expertise. So, following the decision made by His Highness on the employment of the industry of Kimarobo, it is obvious that we should set about expanding our production. But what remains unanswered is how this will be enacted. Princess Lydia Krylova has planned to set out a proposal to the economic minister, Lev Voznesensky, which would undermine the current rights of workers but significantly increase the extent of her production. After all, trade unions and collective action will only serve their own interests and oppose the greater aspirations of the king. If we were to put these plans into action, the king may lose the support of the workers in the future. We must hope that they can see the kingdom's true potential. Which is a good thing. Alright, Dis worker discontent goes up by a little bit more. Um... Construction speed goes down. Resource extraction chain. Uh, I see. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I like more I see. And we're out of equipment anyways, but still. And this is what we're trying to build. Uh, let's see. There you go. Guns. Anti-tank. All sorts of good stuff. Uh, what's the la max level? Let's see. I see. It's not bad. I do want more consumer goods, though. Just more, more, more consumer goods. 
I mean, that's good. Oh, screw it, we'll do it anyways. Ultra stability, but whatever. Minus 30% already. I mean, we don't have enough goods for that at all. Oh, boy. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, a little bit of lag, but whatever. Tito and Spartans defeated? Good job. Well, winter has come to Croatia. Uh, you know what? That's fine. That's fine. Just lower it a little bit more. Because I'm going to be maximizing this as much as possible anyway. So instead of 30%, it's now at 25%, whatever. Oh, actually, this is almost done too. I'm glad I looked. More breakthrough? Yes, please. Changing course. Lean right. The time has come to break with the outdated economic system that our kingdom currently upholds. Unions and workers' rights have proven only to be obstacles to our economic potential. Removing these laws and significantly reducing the power of the unions will certainly benefit our short-term output and removes a substantial amount of power from the hearts or hands of the union leaders, but we continue to run the risk of antagonizing the working classes, as they still believe that the old system works best for them, regardless of this risk. We shall push ahead with the necessary, necessary reforms to unleash our, as of yet, unrealized economic potential and the people's apocalypse. Ooh, not bad. Uh, anything else? Scans for loot? Yes, please. We might get raided a little bit, but whatever. Yeah, I definitely don't want to fight those guys yet. We can kind of close out of this for now. I don't think this will be too much, too bad for us to not see, so. Um, still nothing here. Production quotas? Yeah, whatever. The People's Apocalypse. A nation of writers, poets, and scholars, the University of Tomsk produced more manuscripts and manifestos than anyone really cares to count. Oh, no. The People's Apocalypse. I think I've read this before. Um, honestly, if you want to read about this, go right ahead. Uh, this happens usually any time we play in Central Siberia, so... Please go right ahead if you want to read about this. So it is what it is. Oh, look at that. Orochia? Yes. Yes. I'm glad it looked. Yeah, they're half strength, so that should be pretty darn easy to do. Family markets. <clears throat> it was early morning when Minister Volznesinski arrived at Princess Lydia's offices, and he had to fight his nervousness. He had prepared as much as he was able, but the princess did not suffer fools, and he knew that any oversight would be identified and pounced upon. As he entered the office, the princess looked up, fixing him with a wolfish smile that was so unsettling to so many, and instructed him to show her the financial data that he had acquired. <clears throat> he complied, and after preparing his position at the large conference table she kept preparing for such events, he began to do so. He spoke of the challenges to the state's position that a transition to a free market policies would entail, but also the many potential and long-term benefits besides in how they might be implemented in governmental policy. The princess listened in her near silence, asking only a few questions, but her stare never left. Her eyes bored into his own, un near unblinking as she's as unsettling as ever, and she processed his words and gears no doubt turned in her head. Eventually, when he had finished, she asked him about a single question. How would the proposals affect ordinary workers in the short term? He knew why she was asking, as did every government officer, but he answered her truthfully, knowing that she would instantly identify a lie, however small it would hurt them, he said, as the economy reoriented, reoriented and as some inefficient and unviable industries closed down. At that, she spoke perhaps more to herself than to him. Prince Yuri would not like that, he heard her say, but he would have to see the merit. She would make him see. But Nesinski was careful to not add his own doubtful opinion. Getting between the princess and her brother was a dangerous gambit, and he had no intention of making such a mistake. He will see reason he has to. And these guys are really half strength. I'm pretty confident that we'll win here, so. Yeah, it's looking not too bad for us. I guess it's more army XP, which is nice. ILP victory in Scotland. If you'd like to read about the successful raid, please go right ahead. Beautiful, my friends. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Alright, so. Oh, production facilities? I see. Um, we have enough political power. We might want to save it for more consumer goods, though. Lean right, and then a truly free market. Following the success of our recent reform to the economy, it's obvious that we should continue to pursue the plan put forward by Princess Lydia and liberate the markets from its remaining restrictions. State intervention will be limited, and the last of the unions will be muzzled, in order to create an environment for a truly free market. Soon, we will only need to wait for the inevitable boost to our efficiency of our industry that will inevitably arrive, establishing a great advantage over our surrounding enemies. We lose some political power. Workers' discontent goes up, but we get more construction speed, out, uh, research speed, and output. Sign us up. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. Oh, look at that. Consumer goods, worker discontent is 14, not bad. We're currently at minus 32%, not bad. A pink slip. You wanted to see me, sir? Sir, get entered the office to find out, to find the factory manager was facing the large window behind his desk, his arms folded behind his back. He didn't even turn to look at the worker who had been called into the office. Yes, indeed, I did, Sergey. I'm afraid we're going to be cutting you loose. What? Cutting me loose? Are you firing me? Sergey sounded exasperated, but something in his voice had indicated this wasn't entirely a surprise to him. Yes, we are. It's been determined that your problematic views are not in line with the values of the company. This is about the union, isn't it? I should have known. The government starts rolling back regulations, and now you think you can put your boot on our necks? Don't think I don't see what's going on in here. The manager maintained his cold gaze out the window, his back still facing the now ex-worker. If that is all, you may take your leave now. 
Without another word, Sergei stormed out of his boss's office. He wasn't the first to be fired on account of his history with organized labor, and it certainly wouldn't be the last. The free market, too, has a price, in court of Jarl's life. All around the hall, the heady scent of jubilance permeated the air. The soldiers of the king of God, king's guard, mighty and many of the privileges within the lands of the Lord, celebrated a great victory against surprisingly deadly foes, and the emulation of traditions of the old Rus. They had taken over a local watering hole in Kemrovo to celebrate. Bandits were a constant plague within the corpse of the Soviet Union, and on any other day, the death of another barely coherent rabble would be of little concern to the king's guard. This time, though, the bandits have fought more akin to the Soviet's guard regiment than any bandit lord's troops. The battle had been fierce, and many brave souls had fallen, but the tenacity of the guard cannot be denied. Amid this raucous celebration, an anomaly could be seen. At a quiet corner of the bar, seated with some of the more grizzled veterans of the guard, was a stranger. The man looked almost painfully average. His eyes were simple brown, and his hair was of a similar shade. Of his features beyond that, none could remember. The vodka had flown deliberately and left holes in the memories. This stranger was an honored guard of the king's guard, as he had been integral to the guard's success in the fateful battle. Every once, every once in a while, one of the younger men would break off and offer a drink to the man, and every time he would be, he would politely decline and step. He would buy the men who offered a drink and send them on their way. He spent the night in quiet conversation with the veterans. None knew what the words exchanged, though the one thing everyone present would remember was a melancholy smile that left the stranger's face only when he set out of the wilderness the next morning. A bittersweet memory from comrades long past. And next up, we shall do, after Truly for Market, an economy for the modern age. Ooh, party rate goes up. Nice. We have at long last. Completed the necessary reforms to our industry that will develop a suitable base for future production. The direction of the royal economy has been ultimately decided, for better or for worse, and the days of our ineffective economy are gone. And Kermorobo has truly become home to an economy fit for the modern age. The ex extra capacity that our changes will have brought will improve instrumental to our future prospects in the region. His Majesty is pleased with the Kingdom's progress. There is now a lot less holding back the King's immense ambitions. Alright everyone, it's October 8th or 9th, 1962, and a living economy even though we're currently building new schools. Not too long ago, the market squares and commercial districts of Kemerovo had been utterly devoid of activity. The city had long relied on the industrial sector to prop up the economy, and the previous governments were not entirely keen to bolster small businesses. However, today the story is different indeed. Farmers from the Siberian tongue to open up humble stalls in the city to sell the fruits of their labor. Traveling merchants from all over Russia expand their business to properties within Kemerovo to conduct lucrative trade and commerce. Our subjects, meanwhile, have been all too happy to rush to the markets, which have become filled to the brim with valuable commodities from far and wide. It seems this frozen cold town seems some real potential after all. Our glorious royal capital has found new life, and it is all thanks to the efforts of Princess Lydia and the Royal Minister of Finance's efforts to foster a free market economy in the realm. Prince Yuri's camp, however, complained that this newfound success comes only at the expense of the workers' well-being. While it was indeed necessary to curb the vast privileges afforded to the unions, perhaps it was worth, to give, uh, worth it to give birth to a living, breathing economy. Some good news for a change. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We have already been very successful. We're doing an economy for a modern age. And next we shall do the King's Society. The order of the Kingdom's Society is yet to be determined. Two clear options from His Highness's children have emerged. How, first, the ideals of Prince Yuri, which would remarkably improve the political rights of the people of Kemerovo and the promote equality amongst the population. Alternatively, Princess Lydia offers a more pragmatic decision or choice of Kemerovo's society, which would entail closer links with the military and enforcement of a strict hierarchy to ensure stability. Whoever King Rurik decides to follow will have an increase in their power and influence in the realm, a traitor in a strange land. The capital of the principal was an odd one, seeing modern yet old-fashioned at the same time. An interesting architecture painted the picture of a medieval European capital with an old and new Russian style. It was definitely an odd place to visit through Zemislav, yet he found it comforting. A trip from outside this strange kingdom, it was nothing he was used to seeing back home. How must have changed from just a few years prior? Once was once a dead economy, with only poor farmers and laborers becoming more modern by the day. Perhaps the quirky king knew a lot more about leading than anyone thought. It certainly seemed like it. And all the people. Oh, they were an interesting sight. No one dressed like them anywhere else in Russia. That was for sure. It wasn't how they were dressed that was the most interesting thing. Their actions were even more colorful than their looks. Formerly yet casual, joyful yet serious, the people really were just like their king. Great. Zimislav would be spending a few more days before he left for home. Perhaps he would stay for even longer than he thought. It was a cheerful place, and the people certainly loved to buy what he sold. Perhaps I could bring my whole family for a visit. Maybe. Just maybe. Consumer goods, anybody? Consumer goods? Construction speed? Uh, I would love more construction speed. Arr, I don't want to lower consumer goods anymore, but... Arr, where are we at? We're only at... 30%. Gosh darn it. But 0.15 construction speed is not bad. Factory output, of course, went down. But when you have a billion factories working at the same time, it won't matter how much output you, how little output you have, I guess. Uh, so be it. C'est la vie. Even though we can really use more output right now, really. 
I can make King some motorized too. But out of King's society, Prince Lydia's or Princess Lydia's pragmatism. Contrary to her brother's beliefs, Princess Lydia believes in the pragmatic approach when it comes to modeling the king's society. She's endeavored to sway King Rurik to her beliefs by undermining King, king Prince Yuri's attempts to force his highness to surrender more and more power to the people. Instead, she insists that the king should rule in an increasingly authoritarian manner, employing the royal or the force of the royal armed forces to keep his, uh, his people in check. All that Princess Lydia believes will come of her brother's reforms is weakness or worse, revolution. So, for the sake of the stability and longevity of the kingdom, she will continue to endorse the formation of an authoritarian kingdom. Very, very nice. Alright, so we're done with that. We're done with the research for now. We probably should get some better artillery, because that's... Yeah, I like artillery, but even then, you can... Um, uh, maneuver warfare. I think we might go combined operations. I would like to use tanks. I usually go down strategic theorem. I want to try maybe... Oh, this would be kind of nice, but we're not really a warlord that can really utilize that to its fullest effect. Scan for loot, and then... Central Siberian Republic. Oh, Krasnoyarsk, yes. Yes, I love Krasnoyarsk. Hope you guys love Krasnoyarsk as well. Yes, a thousand times yes. Nice. Very good. Still building, 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 building. King Society. Princess Lydia's pragmatism. On the warpath. Very nice. In the meantime... Oh, actually, that... Oh, a life under the king. Ivan had lived in Kemerovo for as long as he could remember. And during that time, he had seen the rise and fall of the Central Siberian Republic and the chaos that followed. Ivan had come to expect the unexpected during the many years as an industrial worker, but not even he could expect someone like King Rurik II to take charge. The king, long may he reign, was certainly a strange one, especially considering that Ivan remembered the times he used to call himself General Krylov, and would stagger out of the cold Gorkum headquarters to give slurred speeches about traitors and mutiny. Despite the king's many, many eccentricities, old King Rurik seemed to be a good man to follow. He hadn't done anything malicious or harmful to the people who like Ivan so far, in fact. He seemed to really be dedicated to taking care of the Kimrovo's people. He made sure that the common man felt slept and protected, which Ivan had thought impossible ever since the Huns took Moscow. His outfits and palace might be a, a tad odd, but when he gave a speech, even a weary old man like Ivan felt no. Ivan felt like the King Rurik's strange little regime had decent enough shot of liberating Russia from its many fractured rulers. If King Rurik ended up ruling all of Russia, why, Ivan felt like that wouldn't be too bad. Long live the people's king. Hey, look, they refuse tribute. How about you die now? If we can't kill them. Uh, worker discontent, consumer goods, consumer goods. Uh, worker concessions, you know what? I'm going to do both these. This one and that one. So now we are at what? Minus 32%. Not bad. And overall, for the most part, growth. Oh, look, there's another one down here. Yay! Actually, we're missing so much. I might just do that other focus first. Uh, okay. Actually, how much political power are we getting every single day? 1.25, that's not too bad. Communist Revolution of Levant. Uh, as much as I love calling them tanks, I think it'd be best if we go with lines of infantry because we need more resources for this stuff right now. Very really successful, thank you. And actually, do we have enough to do anything here yet? No, we do not, which sucks, but whatever. All right, the lines of infantry. We must focus primarily on our infantry, the backbone of our military. They'll be the ones who defend our borders and march into the enemy's capitals. A well-trained and devoted army match with the best gun Siberia has to offer will win every war. Our army can have no flaws whatsoever if we want to be on top in the coming struggle. More guns, more support equipment, more artillery will keep our infantry and armed and allow us to continue to expand our military. The soldiers shall reach peak performance in battle and we will outclass all of our enemies. There's no place in the king's army for inferiority, which we can use all this off quite literally very, very soon, or even right now. So we're missing a lot of equipment. It is what it is. And next up, equipment. Thank you. Production quotas. So our 20 is still low. Doesn't matter to me. Let's keep building, guys. Keep build, 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 build. I think we're doing quite well, I'd say. And then the king's military heritage. Oh, this, uh, this one, fire and blood. What is a monarchy without its nobles, without its aristocrats, without its generals, without its structure? It becomes nothing more than an anarchic corruption of what it pretends to be. With a powerless and empty figurehead as its face, Lydia has taken up it upon herself to prevent this nightmare from becoming a reality. She intends to create a society with a strict hierarchy at its heart, with the militarist and righteous nobles at the very top. Very nice. Let's keep working on our guns. Yes, plus. And... It, Focus earlier on on artillery, which would be good. Fire and blood. They win elections, cool. They get slightly more recruitable population factor, slightly more strength and speed, and stability, which is actually very, 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 very good. All right, anything up here next? No, we can still do this stuff, but Princess Lydia seems the most influential advisor is Princess Lydia. Thank you. Ah, we love the princess. Princess for days. All right, the king's military heritage. Prince Lydia had 
Prince Lydia, Princess Lydia, has begun to promote His Majesty's past as a skilled and feared warrior, who fought bravely against the Germans during the Great Patriotic War. She also mentioned her father's doomed struggle against the anarchist insurgency of the Siberian Black Army. Lydia hopes to succeed in creating a widespread support for her larger, more powerful military. She hopes that others will start to recognize her belief that a stronger military is not only necessary for the defense of Kamarovo, but essential to the salvation of Russia, which we get more war support, which is nice. 2.5% more attack, which is not much, but I'll take it. More reinforcement and more max planning. Sign us up. Yes, please. Orochia. Yes, just beat the crap out of him. A Pierce. Oh, a Pierce Society. Is this a. I was going to say a racially Pierce Society. I'm like, oh my goodness, I play too much TNO. But, uh. Princess Lydia sat next to her father as she finished touching as the finishing touches were set up. A lot was going to change, and in a better, stronger kingdom was being created for her brother. Yuri had not shown up as he was supposed to. How careless! He couldn't even see how they were creating a more refined Kamarovo. Democracy could not work in a kingdom. How could he not see that? It took a lot less than she thought to transform an entire society, she wondered. One decree made by her father and an entire class system could be built out of nothing. A new hierarchy, she thought. The kingdom would only be ruled by order, and without order, there would be turmoil. The new society that would be created would finally allow the least to be on top. Her father would rule over a perfect and neat structure where everyone knew their place. The nobles and military's rights of power would be finally upheld. As Lydia watched her father sign to her creation into law, she knew his kingdom had become even more perfect. Kamarovo had to be kept powerful and out of the hands of uneducated peasants who know nothing about ruling a nation. A guiding hand led only by the king and the nobility would have to defeat it would lead to the defeat of their enemies. Society would be purified through blood and fire, or it would be not be pure at all. The righteous deserves to be on top, and now we're still at low, which is totally fine. Construction speed. I want to decrease workers of oh, resistance. That's fine with us. Uh, decrease workers' discontent just a little bit. Just a little bit. When we get there, I guess. Thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for dying. Thank you. We love it. Yes. Kill them off. Very successful. Uh, I hope so. Very good. Consumer goods. Yeah, okay. Uh, I want to do this one really badly, but relics of the past. Nice, we got to read about this. Go right ahead. Boom. And then Prince Guards, King's Guards Primacy. The King's Guard was brought into existence very soon after Lydia's father proclaimed himself Rurik the second. They remain well equipped and relevant in the court of the king, but many guards have greater ambitions. If you like to read about machines of the past, please go right ahead. Civilian, civilian factories are nice. Princess Lydia cl plans to help fulfill them in exchange for an increase in her own influence over the veteran unit. She promises riches and glory from fighting in the kingdom's future conquest. All she wishes in return is the ability to exert her, exert her authority over the guard whenever she believes it is required. Sounds good to me. Our realms are secure. With the changes of the king's new society made, and the wolves appeased, and if only temporarily, our state can focus its attention on other concerns in preparation for expansion. The new model society started to bring stability to the realm, something that has relieved everyone from the farmer toiling on the collective farm to the king himself. His Highness hopes that the internal squabbles between his children have ended, not just for the sake of his own threadbed sanity, but also for the kingdom's longevity as a whole. We should get more 15% more stability and a lot more political power. Wow. Um. All right, and we're currently at what? Minus 47%? That's not low enough. Look at all this. Oh, so much societal development is going on. I love it, except for research uh, facilities, which I guess we can do next, just because... Uh, no, screw it. We're doing agricultural methods. Screw the research facilities. Yeah, I'm going to do this one next just because I want to make sure this doesn't get too high. Even though it's not high at all right now. That's all right. That's definitely all right. The uh, pseudo crisis, what falls faster, Amanda or shares? A lot of things fall. Dealing with dissent. The king's god's commander, Yakov Bronin Lichtenstein, entered the room, eyeing the skull sitting on the desk. Oh, that it's just decorative, said the princess Lydia, smiling, who was on the other side of the desk. You're not scared, are you? No, princess, of course not, the commander replied, uneasily looking to face up to Lydia. I have a report you may want to see. The commander handed it over, not knowing how the princess would read it in such a dark room. Interesting, very interesting. <clears throat> replied Lydia with a slight smirk, skimming over the report. Socialist newspapers spreading rumors of strikes, attempting at unionizing. And have you dealt with these problems at all? The commander coughed and looked down at the floor. It seemed to be the nicest part of the room. We captured three of the agitators, my princess. We believe that there may be more, though. And does my father know? Not yet, although I could go tell him now. No, you can wait, said Lydia. Make sure they don't do anything else inside the capital itself. Your payment will arrive once you deal with the rest of them. Just make sure you keep a low profile. Yes, Princess Lydia, the commander began to step by the door. We assure you that these socialists won't reach any of our workers once we have dealt with them. The cancer not, can, cannot be allowed to spread. It's still low. Let's go and do that for now. It's still 22. Not bad. Combined our preparations are very good to get. Uh, let's get some of this. Organization, yes please. Thank you very much. A new hierarchy, yes. Royal Union Subdued, Guzneck Basin. Oh, it's only at 6%. Come on, faster, faster, faster. And then on the warpath. 
With our internal problems settled with, it is time we go forth and conquer the name of our king in Kimrobo. Only through expansion can Rook secure his crown and realm from those who wish to destroy it. We cannot wait for the invaders to come to us. We must destroy them first and liberate those who cry out for harmony and security. Now the warlords who surround us must not be allowed to enslave their people any longer. Rook will lead us to glory and conquest and will finally triumph over our enemies. Alright, so let's do let's cut that one down. So maybe we can help what is this? We need oh there we go. That's that's getting a little better. A day with a family. After we look at this a little bit more. Alright, who do we want to raid? Revolution Council, Dorosia, Central Spirit Republic, Krasnoyarsk. Krasnoyarsk, you are the lucky, lucky person here now. <clears throat> Good. So lucky. Decrease, increase worker discontent. Uh, no, this is really good. I'll go with the construction speed for now, though. Nice. The Krylovs are not your standard run of the female family. With two siblings like Yuri and Lydia, how could it be? Any discussion between them was bound to lead to disaster. Bringing the whole family together, even Boris, who had not cared much about running the kingdom, Rurik had hopes that this will finally end his children's squabbles, and as each of the children entered, things were started well. Rurik decided to steer towards something all of them would enjoy, the unification of Central Siberia under him as a king. It wasn't long until Lydia decided to take the conversation in a different direction, though. If we want to unify the region, the military needs even more funding, Father. We need to make sure we conquer our enemies swiftly before any any of them can put up a strong resistance. What are you talking about, Lydia? Yuri said, opposed to anything she said. More has to be done for our subjects, not the military. Besides, should we not try to approach things diplomatically first? Are you that naive, brother? Lydia responded coldly. Do you really think the surrounding warlords will just let us peacefully integrate them? The Germans will hand just hand back Moscow? Yuri stuttered to, to the delight of Lydia. No, I... Be quiet, both of you. King Rurik interjected, angry that nothing had changed between them. Desperate for all of his efforts. Despite all of his efforts. I brought you here so you could finally get along for the sake of the kingdom. Just end your bickering Boris. You haven't said much. What do you think we should do next? Boris looked to his two siblings, both angry, eyeing them as he prepared to speak. I don't know, Father. Whatever sounds best to you. Yuri and Lydia restarted their arguing match, both trying to get their point across. Yurik sighed as he felt another headache come on, tired of the quarrel that seemed to divide the entire kingdom. Maybe when they're older. Uh, that seems okay. Not really worth it. If you tribute, it, thank you. Let's beat him up as the final thing we do in this episode. Or one of the final things. I would like to read maybe one more thing and then call it there. 100%. I love it. Even though I would prefer if you guys would come, come out. Come on. That'd be really nice. Oh, they're so close. We need more divisions. We really do need more divisions. Did we win? Oh, 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 they, oh never mind. They, they finally showed up. Okay. Oh, it's not going well for us now. But it's slowly getting better on the warpath. With the prince and the princess settled, at least somewhat, King Rurik. Uh, the second has decided to look beyond the borders of Kimrobo. Every king wants to expand the realm, and Rurik is no different. The traitorous warlords and anarchists beyond the border cannot be allowed to live any longer. It was time for Rurik to bring, bring st stability back to central Siberia. The military would have to be prepared for the invasion of our neighbors. They have to be defeated before they come to Kimrobo itself. It may be a challenge, especially for the small military, but with Rurik at the helm leading his men into battle like any king should, they will see victory in the end. Uh, nothing really here I really care about. So, cool. And let us conclude with... One of these things. Hail hey, the season of war. Our preparations are over. A new chapter of our nation has dawned. His Highness has made great efforts to make provisions for the coming struggle. Soldiers stand prepared on our borders, armed with a month of training and guidance from his reverence and weapons our industry has manufactured. In due time, we will take revenge against the deserter, General Adriv, to the east, crush the anarchist rebellion beneath us and unify, diplomatically or forcefully, with the mess sticks to the south. At long last, we shall conquer this grace old master, the lofty remnant of the sea, uh, Central Siberian Republic, in Tomsk. King Rook has been patiently waiting for this opportunity to unify Central Siberia. Hail the season of war, for it shall be bountiful when we begin the next episode tomorrow. Oh, I hope you enjoyed our first episode here playing as King Rook. I'm certainly excited to play as him and see what he has in store for us. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow. when we have a good time beating more people up. Thanks for watching. Have a tremendous rest of your day.